So again, uh, section 8.3 goes on mortgage application, on the mortgage mortgage application process. And from the other day, from on the ad puzzle, we went over the front end ratio, which basically adds all of the housing month housing monthly expenses and divides it by the monthly gross income. Uh, if the front end ratio is 28% or less, then the banks will be uh, willing to approve you for a loan. Now, however, if it's higher than 28%, then they probably won't be too happy and they will not be like uh, approving your loan. Okay, uh, the debt to income ratio. Now that one's similar, but the only difference is that it adds and it takes into account all the debt that you owe, not just the housing. So if you have a, a, a car payment, if you have a student loan payment, if you have credit card debt, all of that is considered a uh, monthly debt, okay? And this one has to be 36% or 36% or less in order to uh, be approved, okay? So now let's look at some examples here. The first example says Eric and Sandy are considering buying a house and need to figure out what they can afford uh, and what bank will lend them and what a bank will lend them. Their adjusted gross income is for $266,988. So that's the yearly income between the two. Their monthly mortgage payment for the house they want would be $1,950. Now, that's already given to us in month and a monthly basis. I'm going to put in red everything that needs to be converted into months. The annual uh, property taxes would be $10,200. But this one has to be converted into a month because it's given to us as a yearly. Okay, and then it says, and the homeowner's insurance premium would cost them $1,400 per year. So $1,400 per year. They also have a $580 per month car, car loan. And their average monthly credit card bill is $2,300. Would the bank lend them the $390,000 they need to purchase the house? Okay, so we need to find the front end ratio. The front end ratio uh, is the one that just looks at the housing expenses. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at right now. Okay, so all, everything uh, related to the house expenses, which include their mortgage, their property taxes, and their insurance. Okay, so that's what we're going to add over here. Okay, we're going to add uh, the mortgage. plus the taxes, property taxes, plus the uh, homeowner's insurance. And we're going to divide all of that by their uh, gross monthly income. Okay, so let's see, what do we have? Okay, so for the mortgage, it's already given to us in months. So we we'll have 1,950 added to their property taxes, which is 10200 But again, that one is given to us on a yearly basis, so we're going to uh, divide that by 12. That way we can know what is their, uh, their monthly payment, so 850 So I'm going to put 850 plus their, uh, what's the other thing, their uh, insurance, which is $1,400 per year. Again, that also needs to be changed to uh, monthly. So we're going to divide it by 12 and we get 116.67. And that is going to be divided by their uh, monthly by their monthly gross income, which uh, we're going to divide the $266,988 by 12. That gives me 22,249, okay? 
So let's, uh, I'm gonna put this in decimals and I get uh, 0 0.131092. Okay, so I have that equal to 0 0.3131, which once I multiply by 100 to get the percentage, which is what I want, I get 13.1%. So let's look at what the front end ratio is again. Okay, front ratio, front end ratio says 28% or less in order to be approved. Yes, exactly. Okay, so because their 13.1% is less, we can say uh, they will get approved since their uh, Front end ratio is 13.1%, and that is less than 28%. Okay. okay, so let's go to the next example. And we have the same thing, except that now it's asking us to find the back end ratio. And the back end ratio, uh, we have to take into account all of this, but we have to also add the uh, the other monthly monthly uh, debt. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that right here. Okay, so I am going to get rid of this part because that's no longer needed. And that as well. Just gonna copy it. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get their mortgage, their taxes, their insurance, but then there's all some other items that I need to consider. Okay, they also have a 580 uh, monthly car loan. So that's already given to us in month. So we don't have to worry about changing it. And then uh, their average monthly credit card bill for $2,300. Okay, so again, given to us in month. So all that I have to do here is also add their other monthly expenses, which is the uh, car. Numbers I put car plus the uh, what was the other thing? The credit card. Their credit card. Okay. So both of them need to be added in there. And let me do that right here. So I already have their mortgage, their property taxes, and their insurance. So now let's add the car payment, which is 580. And let's also add their credit card bill, which is 2,300. And now let's, I'm going to copy this and paste it into decimals to see what do I get. And that gives me uh, 0 0.2605. 0 0.26, I'll put 1. Okay, so once I turn that into decimal, I get 26.1%. Okay, so will the if if we use the front end ratio, will Eric and Sandy get approved for their loan? Okay, remember that the front end ratio, I mean the back end ratio, says that it has to be thirty six percent or lower in order to be approved for a loan. Okay, so in this case, uh, Sandy and Eric have a twenty six point one percent um back end ratio which is less than 36% so they will definitely be approved for the loan okay if a bank looks into both the front end and the back end in order to approve for a loan and one of them is not met then more than likely this the people requesting the loan will not get approved but if they're only looking at one or the other, then, you know, if they pass it, they pass it. But if, again, if they're looking into both, both of them have to be good.